welcome to Lifestyle Solopreneur, the community for entrepreneurs who put lifestyle first. Join your host, Flavia Barris, as she interviews successful lifestyle solopreneurs and shares ideas to help you find the perfect balance between lifestyle, business, and self. Flavia is an attorney, marketing expert, and founder of several online academies. She's been featured in major media, including BBC World News, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Post, ESPN Television, and more. Join us for this episode of Lifestyle Solopreneur. Lifestyle Solopreneurs. Today, we get to speak with Justin Moy. He is the managing partner at Realm Investors, a multifamily syndication group that helps people passively invest in apartment buildings. And he also has his own podcast. It is the Passive Real Estate Strategies Podcast. Welcome to the show, Justin. Bobby, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be on. Super excited to have you. I'm big on real estate. Not Obviously, not all of our guests are in the real estate world, but a fair number are. And I think that's because the idea of lifestyle business and work-life balance really Mm -hmm. plays into what a lot of people who invest in real estate believe in because there's definitely ways to diversify into real estate that do not require your full-time participation and your full-time bandwidth. And so tell us a little bit about Realm Investors and what multifamily syndication means because not everybody listening automatically understands when they hear the word multifamily and they hear the word syndication, uh, not everyone knows what that means. So fill us in. No, I love it. And um, you know, if anybody who's not in this space knew what that mean up front, it'd be pretty impressive. It's uh, more of a niche method of investing. And so Realm Investors is a multifamily syndication group. So what that means is multifamily is the niche that we invest in. A simple term for that is apartment buildings. There's other forms of multifamily. You have like mobile home parks, you have built to rent communities. Those are all fantastic, but we just focus on apartment buildings. Um, And syndication is a term used to describe pulling together resources to accomplish essentially one massive goal. So if you think about this way, you're driving down the street, you see a big apartment building. Well, you know, let's say that apartment building is $10 million. Okay, well, for you to come up with a down payment and closing costs for a $10 million property, you might have to come up with three to four million bucks. Now, while some people do have three to four million bucks to invest in properties, not a lot do. And so what we do is we say, we purchase those properties and we go to our investors and we say, hey, investors, we're purchasing a $10 million apartment building. We need $3 million to complete this purchase. We're going to sell off equity in small chunks, 10, 20, $50,000 chunks, whatever the case is for that specific property. And in exchange for your money, you get passive equity in the property. It's 100% passive. There's no work required or no time required in it. And it's a fantastic way for people to diversify into these assets that are extremely sophisticated, but not have to be extraordinarily sophisticated investors themselves to take advantage. So that's kind of breaking down what an apartment syndication is and really what our group does. Before everyone gets excited and says, I am going to do exactly that. There's a great building down the street from me. It's $10 million. And it just never occurred to me to help gather up some friends, family, coworkers, people. And why don't we all just pitch in 50 grand and we'll make it happen? Because this area is also extremely regulated. So go a little bit into that before anybody just hits the pause button and runs off and commits some (laughs) crimes inadvertently. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a a whole separate legality. So once you step into the commercial real estate space in general, a lot of the nuts and bolts of the investing change. So a lot of legalities to it. If you were to invest in a single family home, even if you did a syndication style where you take friends and family, you kind of buy a property together, there's not the scale of raising money that you have to deal with from both a lending perspective from the banks and a legal perspective. Legal fees for these acquisitions can be tens of thousands of dollars, depending on how sophisticated and how um, what you're buying could be even more than that. Also, the bank fees are pretty substantial. Now, to qualify for commercial loans, there's different qualifications. You cannot be even just a wealthy person and qualify for these loans. You have to have certain checkboxes, meaning experience in the buildings, experience in managing this type of assets and these types of areas with these types of tenants. So there's a lot more checks and balances from both a lending perspective and a legal perspective. When you are bringing together money in a formal sense, there's also security and exchange commission obstacles that you can run into. So you definitely have to keep a clean slate. You have to have 
enormous legal counsel, which is what we do. We have a, you know lots of legal counsel on our team to make sure that us and our investors are clean on that aspect. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of legal challenges and lending challenges that the average kind of retail investor would run into without a group that they're partnering with, which is why uh, you know a lot of us, a big value that a lot of these groups kind of bring as well. And it's interesting because syndications fill this kind of gap because there's these big giant mega corporations or REITs, uh, which is a real estate investment trust, which is sort of like, think of it as this giant company that everyone buys publicly, shares in, kind of like you'd buy shares of Apple. You can also buy shares of a real estate investment trust. But this, you fill kind of a, a niche within a niche, right? Because for a $10 million apartment building, there may not be a lot of huge corporate type institutional portfolio owners that want that particular building. Or maybe if the building needs renovations or needs some kind of value add things done to it, or maybe it's just a distressed property in some other way because the the current owners have let it go. But you you can be pretty nimble, right? Yeah. So I love what you said, like a niche within a niche, because there are so many ways to invest in real estate in general. And then there's so many ways to kind of tackle the same problem, which could be unquality housing. So we love to see those buildings that maybe are a little bit forgotten where the owners are a little bit off and the tenants are really unhappy. And we like to purchase those buildings, inject our money, our expertise, and our ability to run very efficient buildings, and then make those tenants happy or get tenants in there that, that will be happy with the building. So you, you, so the buyers for these types of things, they can be those large institutions. But here's the thing about syndications too is... Even if you're that investor out there, you're listing and you're saying, well, you know, I have 3 million bucks to invest. I would love to buy a $10 million building. There's also a diversification for it as well. So if you if you have, you know, even seven figures of money to invest, it's uncommon for those investors to really dive in all that cash into one thing, whether it's a one REIT or one building or one asset type, they would like to diversify that as best they can. So even if you can break that up into smaller chunks across many properties, that serves that function as well. Another thing about REITs specifically is there are public REITs, which are exactly what you explained. You can buy them in an instant. You, they're, they're publicly traded. You buy them at certain shares. You sell them at certain shares. Then there's also private REITs, which are, are less liquid. They're private investments, but because they're private, they also have the tax benefits of actually investing in real estate, as opposed to you are more taking the benefits and the the pros and the cons of the stock market when investing in public REITs. So yeah, there's so many niches out there, which is why I love doing shows like this, because unless you're really in this game, it could be overwhelming to understand like what's out there, what's available and what might be best for you. That's why I love you know the educational aspect of this podcast, because I have so many different amazing guests on like yourself, who they are experts in their niche, in what they do. And it's just a great way to learn because... There are folks listening who might be thinking, well, I don't have $50,000 liquid right now to invest in real estate. And if I was, I wouldn't really know where to start. But even if that's not you today, we're all building successful businesses. You're all saving, hopefully, saving money to invest, uh, whether you're still in a corporate job or if you're out in the world as an entrepreneur. And at some point, you're going to have cash that's sitting there and you're going to go to a financial planner. And again, we're not giving financial advice on this podcast. So check with your financial planner. You should have a financial planner. And that planner may tell you, uh, this cash that's sitting there because of inflation, it is actually losing value every day. If it's just sitting in a checking account, we got to do something with this cash. Here are all your different options. And Here's what I suggest, right? As a financial planner, they will give you a recommendation. A lot of financial planners are not trained in real estate. So they see the world through whatever their training has been. And for a lot of them, especially if they work for an investment firm itself, rather than being independent, they will say, okay, let's just use it to buy more stocks and bonds and mutual funds. And if you want to be in real estate, you should do this like publicly traded REIT and buy a few shares of that. And they're not usually focused in my experience, I could be wrong. I'm not, I don't want to generalize too much. But in my experience, they're not really looking at this kind of investment, which sometimes does have a higher return. It's riskier, but it may have a higher return than others. So again, we're not giving advice on this podcast. I just want everyone listening who has some money to invest to really look at all of your options and to speak to experts in all the different ways to diversify. 
Yeah. And, and I, you know, I love what you said, because you should consult uh, professional advice and that financial planner, if that's who you're using at the end of the day is a person just like everybody else. They have their specialties. They could absolutely school me in certain asset types or certain investment strategies. And likewise, I'm probably know a little bit more about real estate or private sector investments than they do. And that's totally, totally natural. It's unreasonable to think that this one person is going to know everything and be a master of all of these asset types, especially in a changing environment. And you know that's really what we like to do is I want to educate as many people as possible, irregardless of how much money you have to invest. It's not even my goal to get people to invest today or to tomorrow, anything like that. It's just, I wish I knew about this sooner. I wish I knew about this sooner. And I think everybody, when they invest, that's what you hear. Oh, I should have done it sooner. <laughs> I should have gotten it sooner. It doesn't matter what they invest in. That's always the feedback. So if I could just let as many people know as possible that these types of investments exist and here are their pros, here are their, the things that you need to look for. That's really the ultimate goal. And I think that's what, that's what most people listening are looking for as well. So this show, we really like to kind of explore the idea of work-life balance and not making your work your entire every living hour, every day experience. So. I know you have a lot of demands on your time. So you're not the investor always. I mean, I'm sure you are on occasion and you probably invest in many of the projects that you put together, but you're, you know, what's called the promoter, the organizer, the one helping put these syndications together and probably helping locate the different buildings and and targets, right? But yeah. let us know, like, how do you stay sane? Because I'm sure that you're, and correct me if I'm wrong on what your role is in Realm. I'm actually kind of guessing based on, I do know people who work in your field, right? But yeah. tell us, how do you stay sane? Because it seems like that particular role is is not the passive one. And then how is syndication and real estate investing good for people that do really cherish that work-life balance? Yeah. So I'm not in the passive role. Now, I do. we do invest in passive positions in all of the properties that we put together. I think that's a, a pretty good rule for anybody who is in our role. A lot of different words for us. Some people call us the, the sponsor. You had said promoter, the general partnership. You know, All of those are interchangeable. Essentially, the active people in the deal. So yes, we are looking for the properties. We're negotiating properties. We're doing the financial analysis, qualifying for lending. You know, managing the business plan, managing sales and refinances, all those things. So it's not the passive role in in the position. Now I do have passive roles in both our company and other other syndications and other funds. So I do you know diversify myself as well. Now how I keep myself sane is a couple of things. First is to be very very honest with you, Flavia. I, mean, I love what I do. I truly love what I do. I've been an entrepreneur my whole my whole professional life. My father was an entrepreneur and it really ingrained a lot of that in me. And I have a hustle culture kind of embedded in me. I love to work a lot and I love to feel very accomplished at the end of the day. And the difference is when I stepped into the syndication space, I finally, finally felt my soul was on fire here. Like I loved it every single time. And I never understood when people would say, yeah, I love my work. I never really understood that till I got into here, but I truly, truly love the space. I love talking with investors day in and day out. I love helping people you know, make intelligent investing decisions. And I never felt that with any other role. So my thing is finding this role and finding this niche was a huge help for me because I was an entrepreneur and I, was, I could feel the burnout creeping up on me. I was a transactional entrepreneur. I was making great money, but I could feel the wear and tear on my, my personal life and my friends and family. And I could feel that it was working at a pace that I couldn't keep up for very long. So yes, first thing is I found something that just lit my soul on fire through this business. Second is, you know, always making time for me. I do hobbies that I pursue and I pursue them every day. I love competition martial arts. It kind of grounds me. It keeps me sane. I love reading and personal development and listening to podcasts. All of these are kind of escapes for me. If I feel like I'm getting too stressed out or I feel like there's too much going on in my life right now, those are all outlets that I absolutely love to dive into. And so those keep me really grounded and really balanced as well. And in terms of how syndications fit into people listening now and to that listener, you know, they are 100% passive positions. So if you are that busy professional, if you are that person who doesn't want to commit the time, energy, money, and mental resources to learning about real estate, investing in real estate, tackling large deals, they're totally passive positions. So once you do your due diligence on the operators and the properties that they're presenting you with, 
and you fund your portion of the deal, whatever you're comfortable with, you are passive, you're getting mailbox money, and you're able to just grow that you're getting mailbox money and you're able to grow that portfolio of yours. So, you know, a great syndication and a great syndication team should not be adding time commitments to your plate. So there's people listening who are like, I have got 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, whatever it is, liquid. And I was going to buy some stocks, but maybe I should look into this and invest in real estate instead. Let me go find a syndication that's looking for investors. That's... Mm -hmm. Let's put a little... Let's put the yellow light on some of those folks and maybe even the red light and say, stop. Before sure. proceeding, you have to know that not all of the syndicators out there are skilled or knowledgeable or um, nice. have a track record. Or So how yeah. does someone vet a syndication to make sure... And again, we're not giving advice here. And this is not... Uh, this is generalization because obviously... Yeah. We cannot, we could spend probably two days talking about the nitty gritty and all the details and what you should do. But what's just kind of the square one on how to make sure that who you're dealing with is legitimate? Because I think there's also a lot of people out there who listen to stories like yours and they're like, I'm going to be a syndicator. I'm going to, you know, have yeah. Justin's role and they go out there and it's their first one and they may not really know what they're doing. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And so the biggest part of it is if this is something that you're thinking of doing, you want to spend majority of your time, in my opinion, a majority of your time doing due diligence on that operator, on the Justins out there, on them as an individual, on their company. I also cover a lot of these topics in the show that I had mentioned or that you had mentioned in the beginning, passive real estate strategies, where this is really everything that we cover. Um, I even have certain questions you want to ask your, your sponsors. I have certain things to look for. Track record matters. It's not the end all be all. You really want to go with somebody who's very open, very honest, very transparent, and is very open to showing you exactly what's happening, exactly what they're doing. Because at the end of the day, I don't care how great you are in this business. I don't care how long you've been investing in real estate. It doesn't matter what the market is. No investment goes 100% as planned. Now, there's due diligence that we do and there's fail safes that we have and there's steps that we take to mitigate those. But nobody can sit here and say that, yeah, every single thing, every single way that we plan it out goes according to plan. There's always going to be obstacles unforeseen that you need to overcome. I mean, COVID was a massive one. Nobody was able to foresee that. No matter how good you were in this space, no matter what you underwrote or what your financial analysis said, it threw a wrench in things. So you want to look for operators who can adapt. You want to look at operators who are going to be here to stay. You don't want to be that person who they try this out. They maybe buy a property. They decide after a year or two, man, this is a lot more work than I thought. You know, I thought real estate was passive. You know, this, this is not passive. They should be a passive investor. You want to make sure that they have enough of a track record that you know that they're there to stay. And then the next step is to really get educated. If they have podcasts like, like mine, I have passive real estate strategies, listen to a few episodes. Do they seem like they know what they're talking about? Do they seem organized? Are they consistent with what they release? Because to me, that is, that's something that's important to let me know that this, they treat this like a real business. A lot of times they'll have downloads. I have one you could check out. It's called thedefinitiveguidebook.com. It's called The Definitive Guide of Passive Real Estate Strategies at thedefinitiveguidebook.com, where I have all the education there. My role should be one of educating, not really of pressuring into investment or to, to sell, you know, quote unquote investments. It's to educate potential investors. So absorb their materials, absorb the education, follow them on social media and, and podcasts, and then schedule a call with them, meet them face to face and see who they are. And then trust your gut, your gut and your will pick up on certain items about people, uh, who they are on a personal level. And if you get a weird feeling from somebody, that feeling's probably telling you something and really follow those instincts. So you really want to follow a lot of those steps, get educated by them, see if you agree with a lot of things that they say, follow them on social medias, or if they have podcasts, listen to what they're saying, and then book calls with them and get to know them face to face as a person. And then really decide from there if this is still something you want to do, or somebody that you want to pursue this with. So Justin, if someone wants to learn more about Realm Investors, that's your company, where would they go to connect with you and learn more about what you do? Yeah, so you can definitely connect with us. Our website is uh, realminvestor.com. You can see a lot of information about us. The best resource that I have is going to be called The Definitive Guide to Passive Real Estate Strategies. It's at thedefinitiveguidebook.com. And then you're going to see more information about us, the team, about different real estate strategies that are completely passive. So syndication is one of them. There's a couple others that I outline in the book and, and all their kind of pros and cons and who best fits in those roles. And check out my podcasts. 
passive real estate strategies. So listen to more of different people, how they've invested, what their experience has been like, different questions you should ask operators and really see if this is for you. But I'm very reachable. Just reach out again. I love talking about this stuff. It really does light my soul on fire. So never hesitate to to check us out and reach out to me personally. Everyone, go check it out. If you want to become or learn more about becoming a Realm investor, then go to arealminvestor.com. Connect with Justin there. Learn more about what he does. Justin, it's been amazing to have you on the show. I love talking about ways where business can be fully passive. There's so many different entrepreneurial paths that require varying levels of effort. But syndication and becoming a passive investor in real estate you do some research and diligence up front, but generally it is a passive ride. And that is just fantastic to offer to the audience as something to learn about. That's why I love this podcast. We like to be educational and we like to be inspirational. And Justin, you have been both. So thank you for being on the show today. Flavia, thank you so much. And of course, to the listeners, thank you so much for spending some time out of your day with us. Guess what, lifestyle solopreneurs? If you don't yet have an online business earning you enough passive income to live the life of your dreams, I'd like to suggest you consider trying out Kajabi. Kajabi is an all-in-one solution where you can create and teach online courses, publish a paid newsletter, launch a free or paid podcast, process payments, build one-on-one coaching portals for your clients, and much, much more. I personally use Kajabi to power numerous successful and profitable online businesses. Lifestyle solopreneurs, there's a free trial of Kajabi waiting for you at this link, www.kfreetrial.com. You can try Kajabi for free, no obligation, by going to www.kfreetrial.com. Again, kfreetrial.com, and that K stands for Kajabi. Starting an online business helped me break free from that corporate grind, and I hope it does the same for you. You have nothing to lose and absolutely everything to gain. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and see you next time.